Hi guys, welcome to Explore's YouTube channel. Today we're going to understand how can we go about making an AI chatbot. The example that we're going to be taking today is uh, Tune It Up, which is an auto mechanic workshop that provides services such as car maintenance, um, checking your tire pressure and anything related to a car. So let's go ahead and try to understand how is this bot helping the business. Then we look under the hood and try to understand how was the bot made. So if you're a tech enthusiast, maybe a business owner, or maybe just someone who's curious about AI, this video is for you. So let's go ahead and try to start the conversation. It's giving me two options, book an appointment or cancel and reschedule an existing appointment. So what I'll do, I'll uh, try to book an, book an appointment. So as you can see, it has given me a long list of all the services provided by TuneItUp. I can just come here and pick any service. Let's say I pick uh, exhaust, which is number 11. And would like to add any additional services? Yes. I'd like to add uh, tire service, which is four. I'd like to proceed now. Okay, now we have started with scheduling. Now it's asking me for a preferred date. I'll say July 6th. Now, because this is AI, I could have given the input in absolutely any format. In a sentence, I would have changed 6th of July, July 6th, or maybe only July 6th, or maybe the proper ISO format. All of those would have been converted into the format that our bot needs automatically. So let's see what it's saying now. It is giving me the available times. So what the bot has done, it went back to the Google Calendar, saw all the slots available on July 6th and returned all the available slots. Now I can come here and pick any of these times. Let's say I pick the 3 p.m. All right, now it's saying, uh, you've picked the appointment on July 6th. So would you like to confirm? Sure. Now, please choose between the following vehicle save service options. Wait for your car or drop off your car. I'll uh, choose to wait for my car. Now it's asking for my name. Now my email. And then finally my contact number. Now it's asking me the make, model, and year of my car. I'll say on the R8 Yes, I'd like to add, take extra care of my car. So a few cool things have happened here. We have an image of the car that we requested. We have all the options that we have filled in like the appointment date, appointment time, service duration, my address, my contact details, the vehicle name. Now I can either confirm the booking, I can change the details, any of these details, or maybe I can just delete the booking. So let's say I want to confirm the booking. Now let me show you what happens at the back end when we have confirmed the booking. Also, it's asking me, do I want to get uh, monthly car maintenance tips for free? Let's say I do, all right, so I'll subscribe. Perfect. Now let's see what happened as soon as I pressed confirm booking. We'll go to the Excel and see there's a new row here with all the information that I gave it. Also, let's see Google 6th and we have a booking for take extra care of my car on July 6th, right? So the interesting thing is whenever we do something on this bot, let's say rescheduling, deleting or making a new appointment, all of those actions will be updated on your Excel your Google Calendar and the email address of the business and the customer. So that was the basic flow of the bot. Now let's try to see how is the bot functioning. All right, so here is our voice flow project and I'll take you through everything that we have done. First of all, we start with set API keys. Here is the Google API key, the SERP API key and the OpenAI API key. We'll use the Google API key for all, for accessing documents, for fetching data, for storing data. Right, then we have the SERP API key that we'll be using to get the image 
of whatever car the user wants to search. And then finally, the open API key that we'll be using for intent analysis. I'll show you how. We start with a welcome message. We show the main menu and then capture the user response. Once we capture the user's response, then we call a function, which is the intent analysis. What are we doing here? This is basically a function uh, which is calling our own API, our own open AI API, where we are getting a response of this capture block. Whatever the user has given us here, that will be analyzed and we'll get the intent of that query from this block, from this function. Okay, so I'll show you the function also. Here is that function. And essentially, what we have done here is we are asking to analyze the user's message for intent classifications and we need to evaluate on the based on specific phrases such as book an appointment, delete, reschedule or ask any other question. So we are basically asking GPT to tell us if any of these queries are a match and if none of them are a match, then give us three that is ask any other question. So let's get back to our workflow. So here, let's say I asked the user to book an appointment. That book an appointment will go here the intent analyzer will analyze that what the user wanted and that will go here which is service go to service based on which service the user has selected let's say the user selects book an appointment all right so what does it say it will say understood let's move on to scheduling and you guys must remember we got that message when we were talking and checking the flow so let's go to scheduler we'll go here we'll go to scheduler and let's see what's happening in scheduler the main objective here was to actually get the time and uh, date of the appointment. So let's say the user asks, we ask the user, can you please provide a preferred date for the appointment? And like you said, the user can give this date in absolutely any format. So what we do, we have added a set AI here and what we are using it to format the date. We are asking it to convert the date, the last utterance and apply it to selected date. And what is the prompt? We are asking, the user has given a date in last utterance, understand the date, validate and convert it into the format Y, 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 MMDD, which can be anything based on the program that you're about to write. Now, very important thing is to check if the date format is correct or not. Now, this code can be very easily uh, written by uh, GPT or any other AI that writes code. All you need to ask them is that I need to check what are what all are we checking for, let's say, leap years. There shouldn't be 31st of in any months that uh, there are only 30 days in and things like that. So ask GPT or any other AI to actually write a code that checks the date format, if the date format is correct or not. And it will give you this sort of code. If the date format is correct, we go to date pass check. Now what is date pass check? Here we are asking, uh, we are checking if the date was in the past or not, because we cannot book appointments for a date that has already happened. All right, so once we are done through all the checks, we have checked that the date is valid. Now we have also checked that the date was not in the past and we finally converted into ISO format. Now we are converting and saving the final date in selected date. All right. So what we are going to do now, we are actually showing the user that perfect. You have chosen this date. And remember, uh, this was the date that we got in ISO format. Here is the date, right? Okay. Now uh, we'll get booking time. Now let's see what happens when you go to get booking time. All right. So get booking time. Here, first of all, what we need to do is get ISO minmax states. Why ISO minmax states? Because we'll be calling the Google API here, Google Calendar API here to create intervals. Now, as you could see, we had created these intervals, right? How are these intervals created throughout which time? So what we'll do, whenever we need to call the Google Calendar API, we need to give, we need to send two parameters, start time and end time. And because we need to see which of the slots is the user busy in so we'll see uh, from the start of the day till the end of the day how many slots are busy or occupied all right so when we have deleted the busy slots from the total number of uh, slots then we'll get the available slots and that's exactly what we are doing here and we can ask chat gpt to write a javascript code to do the same all right so once we check if available time is not empty because it can happen that we are booked for the entire day so if that's the case we'll uh, see that available time is empty and we'll book another date but if that's not the case then we'll go ahead and we'll show the user here are the available times once we have shown the user that here are the available times the user can come and pick any time that he or she finds suitable 
can be in any format and because it's an AI, we'll be able to extract the correct time from whatever time the user has given us. All right. So we have confirmed the time. Now let's go back to the scheduler. So once we have confirmed the time, we'll now see if we want to wait for our car or do we want to drop off our car and uh, whatever we have chosen, whatever the customer has chosen, we'll set the service wait option to that. So once get booking time is complete, we'll then choose if we want to wait for our car or do we want to get it dropped off and whatever option we select, we'll set the service wait option variable to that option. Okay. And uh, then finally, we'll go to lead capture, which is simply collecting name, number and email of the person. So here we are taking all the personal details, name, we'll validate the name. This is because let's say the user says, my name is Pranav. So here the AI will identify that the name is just Pranav and it will not save your entire sentence as the name. Similarly with email and the phone number. The customer here wanted us to check for only US and Canada numbers. So that's what we have done. But again, you can validate the phone number according to whatever your use case is. And once we are done with the lead capture, we'll then finally ask the user, what is the make, model and year of their car? And uh, then we'll ask if they want to add any additional comments or uh, for the appointment. And let's say we do that. Then we get the car image. Now this is the SERP API, which gets us the search result based on the vehicle info, right? So we have written the car make model and year according to that, whatever Google image we get, we'll show that to the user giving them their appointment details for a review. All right. So here we have the appointment summary, everything, every detail that we have captured is shown here. We can either confirm our booking we can either change the details, delete or no match. Let's see what happens when we confirm the booking. As soon as we press confirm booking, we say, okay, your uh, details have been recording uh, recorded and um, we are changing the date format. And the main thing is we're calling a make.com scenario. Now, what is this make.com scenario here? We are actually going to make.com to register every, all the details that we have captured in a fine uh, Excel sheet and also emailing the customer with all the details and saving the event on Google calendar. So here you can see that we have a new booking event where we are changing the calendar and updating information on the Excel. All right. So let's say we have saved the information data is captured. And what if I press reschedule? What happens then? Let's see. Whenever we press reschedule, first it will ask enter your registered email because from the entire Excel, it needs some sort of, uh, it needs some sort of an identifier to uh, say that this is your previous appointment and these were your details. And this is a standard Google API call where we are capturing all the entries in the Excel sheet. Then we are checking if the user has a booking. So from the entire list of records, we'll see where the email matches. Okay. So let's say the email is found. What we'll do, we we'll convert all the times, all the dates into ISO format as we require. And, and that's rescheduled. What if I delete the appointment? Well, for deletion also, it will make sure that you first reschedule. It will check if you, if an appointment exists or not. And if it exists, it will simply ask that you want to delete. If you press yes, then again, it will go to a make.com scenario, which simply deletes an entry from the Google sheet, but also uh, deletes and edits it in the Google calendar and your email. Here is the delete. All right, so that's delete. And what about free text query? So what we have done is we have given this persona to an AI that you are tuned it up. We have given it a personality. So any question that it's uh, not uh, able to answer, or maybe the user is asking a question which is out of the loop of booking an appointment and the other things, then it will actually assume the personality of a tuned up bot and it will give you an exact response that you would want a trained professional to give. So that's also one ability. Perfect. So that was pretty much it on what actually goes into making a bot like this, right? We'll be posting more such content. And if you have any ideas or you have different use cases and you want to build a bot for your own business, do get in touch. Thank you.